If you're looking to automation but don't know where to start, maybe you should start here. Welcome to Swarf and Chips. Now, Geo, what, have we, what are we in front of? This is the Alter Load Assistant um, that we're going to be reviewing. There's lots of different variants of this particular automation solution, but we're going to be reviewing this today from the ground up. And I just want to give you a few facts, really. Alter sold its first automation solution in 2014. By 2018, it was exporting this system to 25 different countries and they have now sold over 500 units around the world. Now that's significant growth. It is, and obviously it's a popular machine, probably for good reason. Now, I've learned a lot about this machine today. We've been through a workshop, we've been given some talks and whatnot. I found there's, there's like you said, there's, there's different variants. There's, there's the, turn, the turn stacker, the mill stacker, and the universal grid plate. Now the stacker systems have uh, kind of rods that come up and they're kind of, uh, they have a sprung loaded um, back plate that pushes parts up. As you take one out, it pushes the next part up so the robot can then access those. And they can fit, I think 11, 12 stackers in total, 11 that you can fill with billets and the, the last one gets put, um, the finished components get put on. This isn't the stacker, this is the universal grid plate. So this can be used for both uh, round parts and square parts. Should we have a look around the back? Definitely, Ron. Let's go actually, have a look. This is the front, actually. This is the back <laughs> here. The front here is, um, this has got a dual pallet version, which you only get with a grid plate, I think. Um, but as you can see, uh, we have this kind of laser cut steel plate here, which has just got the, the profiles of whatever part you're putting into it. Now, why is this versatile, Gia? Oh, it's extremely versatile. So these grid plates now are configurable to all different shapes and sizes. And there are lots of standard options available, but there's also bespoke options if required for kind of irregular shaped parts. So they do hexagonal, square, round. And, and, and irregular shapes like, as well. well. How would you put a regular, regular shape on this? So it, it's literally just laser cut out to, right. to suit a component. Okay, or enough. you can have different features in there so you could only load the component in one way so it's actually foolproof. But what I want to touch upon before we move into that a little bit further, Rowan, is, is the beauty of this universal system here is that the operator could be here loading raw billets into the back of this um, gridded system whilst the robot is still um, operating at the front so we haven't got to stop the robot then this is a rotary table that then will feed the new components to the robot so you're kind of getting a dual pallet as well as the robot absolutely system. so you're keeping that spindle turning moving on to your points about kind of making it foolproof from when we looked at that earlier you know there's it's a, there's lots of standard solutions available with the halter solution but tell us about some of the bespoke solutions so they were talking about available. die cast parts now one of the customers wanted to you fit die cast parts into the grid plate and they could be orientated in obviously a couple of different ways in a round profile so what they did was put inlays that were 3d printed into the bottom of the into the bottom of the the profiles and that meant that actually you could only put the cast parts in a certain way which meant obviously the robot gripper did not crash into the part being orientated the wrong way. And it's all about pokey yoke as well, because if you want to try and de-skill uh, loading these up, then you can have a few really skilled CNC operators running even more machines and have some other people that can come in and, and just load them up. Absolutely, great points. And we're going to be touching on uh, 3D printing in a bit more detail as well about the jaws, if you're looking to actually want a whole second up work with 3D printed jaws, but we'll touch upon that in a minute. Before we move on to everything else, Rowan, Let's talk about the versatility and flexibility of this system and portability. So in terms of portability, it's got uh, three conical anchor points actually, that the whole system, so this is like an off-the-shelf system, it's one piece. You can pick, pick it up with a pallet loader, pull it off these conical anchor points, which are what locate it next to the machine tool, and bring it around next to another machine tool, be that with this universal grid plate system, be it a lathe or a mill. 
you're not re you're not uh, limited to just one machine, and uh, that's really important. It's it's really important because you know there's a lot of legacy machines out there in the marketplace that have not been automated yet. So if you were looking to get into automation for the first time, it's a very easy way to. Uh, it can be interfaced, shall I say, to any machine tool. And if you've got several different machine tools in in your in your workshop, and you don't quite know which one you want to automate yet you buy this, you can fit it to any of those. So and, uh, it's about de-risking that automation investment as absolutely. well. Absolutely, and usually, you know, more often than not, the robot will stay on the same machine because once you've automated a machine... You actually realise, I want to keep that going. I don't uh, want to have to spend the time to move it to a different machine. 100%, but still having that portability and being able to move it away from the machine tool to potentially clean the machine tool out or to do some machine tool maintenance is very important. Or even if you're factory grew and you wanted to machine move machines within your facility having that portability aspect is, is a really nice but feature. why can you move it around how come there's no big caging system how well, does this stay safe so with the anchors that you mentioned so having them anchors but how um, does it stay safe normally they'd have a big cage ah, so we've got the uh, yeah. So we've got the, this vision system or, or sensor system if you like at the bottom here so if you move into this first um, kind of section here. The robot's now reduced to 10% to, to 10 per, to 10 speed, as you can see. And if yeah. I move back out, it's back up to 100% speed. And if you go right into the middle, Rowan, yep. it will if actually, I start walking, it will actually slow down. stop. It's slow now, and now it's going to stop. And it's actually stopped. So they, they focus a lot on safety. It's one of their main... It's one of their key points of focus. Absolutely. They, as part of the complete package, they see you mark the whole system. They do all the risk assessments. You don't have to worry about safety. Because I, what I found out quite a lot recently from, uh, from some events we've been to, from some presentations is actually safety is such a massive uh, focus and you can't run one of these if it's not been C-marked and you've not been risk assessed. And probably one of the barriers to entry as well if you've never got into automation It's another before. cost, isn't it? You don't really want to think about Absolutely. or have to worry about. Absolutely. So safety is one of the biggest points on this particular system. Let's move in now, Rowan, and, and look at the grippers and, and look at the head. Now, you know, these are kind of just standard prismatic parts, but say, for example, if that part was loaded onto a fifth axis machine tool and you'd machined up one was, a, 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 you know, an irregular shape part, you could actually 3D print the jaws to, to hold that to irregular, hold some irregular shape, irregular which shape. is a really nice um, feature. And you've actually got a little plate up here you can use to turn the parts around using the robot arm, which obviously is really important if you want to do both sides unmanned without having to do maybe one side, turn it around, so one flips them all over. So that's actually a nice little a nice little feature that means you can actually flip parts over as yeah. well. The turnover station, the turnover station. And, and as we've mentioned, this is a free axis machine tool, but this lends itself to any type of machine tool. Well, it's funny you say that. They did mention actually, because we're picking up raw billets, you can actually take the finished component and put it and the robot arm, as long as you're inside the perimeter of the robot arm, you can fit a little deburring station here, just like a little bench bench grinder with one of those those brush uh, brush uh, diameters on them. And you can take the part in, you can deburr it, you can stick it in a wash system, stick it in some kind of uh, inspection system as well. So actually, it lends itself to a lot of more growth in the company in terms of not just automating machining, automating lots of other kinds it's of processes. It's a really, really good point that is, isn't it, Rowan? Because you're adding value, you, you, you're maximizing your investment and you, you're reducing your return of investment time by doing different processes and getting the robot to be deburring, washing or whatever while the machine is still running and still tending the machine at the same time. So it's doing several operations all at once. Shall we get on to, we've not talked about how easy it is to use. Now obviously automation, using robots, using the even the FANUC, the, the FANUC pendants that control them, some people might be quite daunted by those controls. So instead, uh, Holter have put a lot of work into the, the smart control here. So first of all, we've because we've walked, if you walk out of the out of the safety zone, please, Sorry, Joe. Robin. So because we've walked <laughs> into the safety zone, we've been we've got an error on the uh, on the FANUC robot. So if I reset all those errors out, Cool. Now I can hit play, and literally, it now says it's paused. If I just hit play, robot should start running. So now it's going to just continue where it left off. Brilliant. And it's still on 10%, so you're going to turn it up. So even Geo can have a go with this, change the rapid to back to 100%. So now it's picking the parts back up and loading them in as normal. But if I want to create a new, uh, a new part uh, program, I'm going to click this button here. New part program is, I don't know, row and test or whatever you call it. Um, and the system is conversational. So if I press next, it's going to ask me if I've got round, square, or hexagonal. I've got round parts for simplicity. What diameter is it? Uh, 25 mil? No, okay, 15, whatever. Uh, height is, uh, let's put in 80 mil. 
that's quite a small and small and long part that isn't it but uh, and then this is asking me what the size of the, the finished part is so the finished part if it's 12 might be 10 so I stick 10 in here so it's actually the the, the system being conversational means it's a lot easier to set up uh, lots of the lots of different parts that might only be outstanding round billet or square billet but it's a lot easier for someone who maybe can't even run a CNC machine to set a new part up here. I mean, one of the guys was saying actually it can take them five minutes to set up a new part, which wouldn't happen if you had one of the kind of more standard automation systems with a cage and a fixed robot bolt to the floor that's only made for a single product. This is one of the key features to uh, the Holter um, system, in, in, in my opinion. They've put the, a the lot software. of work into this smart control, a absolutely. obviously. Absolutely, it's an absolutely um, massive feature if you're getting into automation for the first time. Now, Rowan, why should we automate? We should automate firstly because you might buy a nice new five-axis machine, but if you're only working days, you're only running it for eight hours a day, depending on your cycle times, obviously. But if you've got, even if you've got longer cycle times, you might want to run it through the weekend, which you won't be able to do. So it's all about making sure you get a maximize your return on investment on a five-axis machine, even one of your old machines. It's about making sure the spindles are turning as much as possible. So it's like we always say on Swarf and Chips, keep that spindle turning. Exactly.